Can you describe for us, in a nutshell, what the film's about? Well, the movie's about a couple, uh, Brigitte and Xavier. Uh, they are cattle breeders, and um, no, their children are not uh, as young, and they're gone. Um, and so this couple is, uh, in, a, in French we say, tête-à-tête. Um, it meant that uh, well they're just together and they don't know what to do and I think it doesn't disturb uh, Xavier who is uh, totally uh, obsessed with uh, his uh, herd of cattle uh, but um, but uh, Brigitte played by Isabelle Huppert is a bit bored of this uh, monotonous uh, life. The film is basically about middle age ennui about doldrums or about sort of being on a plateau in life. Right. Why did you make this film on this thing? Well, you know, uh, it's true that I'm not a cattle breeder, that I'm not, uh, but um, um, at first I think I wanted to make this film for Isabel because I wanted to uh, work with her again. We worked on uh, a movie called uh, Copacabana oh. and uh, I really wanted to work again with Isabel. So. I tried to think about a story uh, for her and, uh, and a role that she never played before. And uh, Isabel is well very famous and also she, she played a l lot of roles, very different. But she never played a farmer, so I thought that it could be... Uh, also, I thought it could be funny and a bit challenging to put her uh, surrounded by cows. Yeah. Because Isabel is, well, very famous as a, um, as a very Parisian actress. Uh, even uh, intellectual actress, so it was good to, to, to put her uh, uh, in the mud. Why the theme of marriage and infidelity? Well, I, I think I wanted to make a love story in fact, uh, and uh, love has certainly something to do with uh, infidelity too, but the, the main thing was to make a love story in a couple, and, uh, but sometimes love has to take that, that uh, risky uh, road. Mm. And, um, but at the same time, it's, um, it seems when we talk about it that, that it's a very uh, tough film because uh, it's about infidelity. And, uh, but it's a very tender film and there's, no, there's conflict but with, with no, uh, no hysterical scenes and no cries and no... I mean, there's some cries but n not uh, like a lot of other movies uh, about the, this scene. Yours is, I think, about the fourth or fifth film this year to come out either questioning marriage right. or talking about marriage or talking about infidelity. Mark, what's going on? Why um, is this particular theme no, but it's so true. prominent now? I, I don't know if you're talking of French movies, but... Uh, well, Gone right. Girl because in has France, gone crazy. We, yeah, in France we've got a lot of movies about women who are trying to escape for their life and their couple. Right. Um, and when I wrote this story, I didn't know that I would have so many films, uh, other films, mm. who would be uh, with the same subject. I think there's something in the air, but I could not explain why. I think that uh, we... Well, all this movie are also saying that we, we, we do believe in love right now and uh, that it's like a good uh, way to uh, maybe to, to feel better in, in this life, uh, in this crisis life. I, I, I try to make a, a very uh, traditional movie and at the same time it's a bit uh, subversive. Well, it's a bit risque in that you allow the character to actually go quite a way down that path right. before she basically reunite with right, her husband. Right, right. Um, um, but you know I, I, at the same time, there's, uh, I think there's no suspense in my movie. We can say that from the beginning that they will stay together. But it's just, uh, oh, sometimes you need fresh air to, 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 to feel better and uh, to, to love again and, and be together again. And we're also addressing the issue of middle age. Right. Because you're 40. Yes. So welcome That's to the it. Middle Age <laughs> Crisis Club. I don't feel part of it right now, but uh, I will, I will. Uh, no, but I, uh, what you say about the middle age, it, no, it, I think it's also because it can be a very interesting age for cinema, I mean for, for characters, because they appear like, well, Isabel would not like to, uh, me to say that, but like old people and they're not at all. I mean, in this movie she's like a teenager and so, it's um, you can surprise the audience 
with with this characters. Generally speaking, right. More films, more studio right, movies right, right. are being aimed at older film goers. Right. Okay. I mean, this is this is seen as a positive thing. To be honest, I, I think that I uh, never wrote a movie. I mean, a screenplay, uh, thinking about the audience. It's a very selfish thing at the uh, at first. Uh, you just write the story because you want to film it and uh, because you like it. But then you have to consider the audience, and I think that you really consider them during the editing part. Uh, and so no, I realized that I made a movie for for maybe this movie is for certain age people. Uh, but uh, the thing that I like also is that we made a lot of test screening uh, when we were doing the editing, and I realized that uh, there were a lot of very young people who liked this story because it was also a, a funny story with uh, with a lot of twist and surprise. So. Um, I like the fact that I made a movie for women, maybe, but uh, also that uh, if there's some young people who can be curious, I'm sure they would like it too. And when I say state screening, it's just, you know, being in the editing room with my editor and uh, we try to make come like five different persons that we don't know. Because it's always interesting to see uh, how they would react and if they really understand, or maybe they, in fact, Generally, what we realize is that the audience is more uh, intelligent than we think. Because when we're in the editing room, we're always afraid, like, uh, can we, uh, do we have to add this line or can we we cut it? And, and, and in fact, when we do that kind of test, we realize that uh, we can cut a lot. Are you a Woody Allen fan? Mm hmm Right. Because in a lot of Woody Allen films, he has the theme of, people transgressing right but keeping it secret and those secrets remain secret they're never exposed and he seems to be saying in a lot of his films that life is like that that sometimes you do transgress and you do the wrong thing morally but you get over it you get through it you keep it to yourself and life continues right there seems to be a lot of that in this film. Yeah, that's right. It's the big things that she has to hide in her life. And I think that maybe because of this, she's uh, able to hide more more, more, more stuff. And, and um, But yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, Woody Allen. And I can even say that uh, I, I love a movie called Husband and Wife uh, with Judy Davis. That um, is for me uh, like the Australian Isabelle Huppert, or maybe uh, Isabelle. I mean, well, I think they're very close. There's uh, something uh, they could they could be sister in a movie. But I like also the tone of Woody Allen. I mean, the that it's well, it's supposed to be comedy, and it can be a very bittersweet and melancholic yeah. too. There's a gender imbalance in Hollywood with directors. It's a big issue. I spoke with Sophie Lelouch a few mm -hmm. years ago and when I asked her the same question about whether there's an issue in France and she said it's not an issue at all in France. I, I would say the same thing. We talked about it recently at uh, last year at Cannes Festival because uh, they were saying that we need more women in the cinema industry in France. But I have the feeling that there's no problem at all and that it's a fake problem in, 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 uh, in France. Because, uh, well, for example, um, I always worked with a female uh, cinematographer. For this one, it's uh, Agnès Godard, but the one before it was Céline Boson, and the one before it was Hélène Louvard. So, I mean, that there are a lot of uh, female cinematographers, for example, which is normally supposed to be a very tough job. And um, there's a lot of uh, female directors in France, Mian Saint Love, Sophie Lelouch, uh, uh, Céline Sciamma. I mean, in fact, I think we, until recently, we never thought about it. We, we always considered that, uh, well, there were men and women in cinema, and that's it. And what about your cinematic influences? Are they international, or do they tend to be French? Who do I like? I really like uh, Alexander Payne who is American, mm. and uh, I was very happy because there was a critic in The Hollywood Reporter who was comparing this film to uh, Alexander Payne movie. Um, well, he's the one I really like right now. I really like Mike Lee also. After there's a lot of uh, dead directors like mm. uh, François Truffaut and the Italian directors. Mm. From the reason why I'm asking right, this right. is because I still think 
that there's a little bit of a myth lingering still that French filmmakers and the French film industry is very insular. But every time you talk to someone, you find that that's actually not true. That rather than just always looking inward, that French filmmakers have for decades and decades. Yeah, but for always, example, do you think that this um, movie, Folie Berger, is very French for you? Or? Well, I think it's very French, but I was going to ask you when the Americans are going to make their version of it. Well, it would be very different if it was an American movie. Because, uh, for example, uh, it could not be the story of uh, someone who meets uh, Stan and then the story turns to be a fiasco and she meets another one. It would be the story of the encounter between a, a woman and a younger guy and that would be all. I mean, you cannot have that kind of twist and even this end, we will not reveal it, but it's it, it would have to be very... It would have to be, in, uh, it would have to be very clear and uh, less uh, open. I think they could remake it, and I would love it. I mean, I, mean, I would love to, to 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 see it, but I think it would be very different. Right. And just finally, what did you think of what happened in the early nineteen nineties when French film took on a populist? Take there was kind of Luc Besson and Jean Reno were behind right, this right, 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 right. Yeah, um, it, where there was an embracing of populism right. and very heavily influenced by mm -hmm. American okay. cinema, but also heavily influenced by earlier French cinema, yeah. French action cinema. What did you think of that? I mean, some people have seen it as a split. Some people have seen it as a reaction against French art house films. What did you think of? Of that because now we have all the Liam Neeson movies right, we right, have right. taken and we have the transporter films and so well, on. Well, I, I never liked this movie and uh, I never liked uh, Luc Besson, but uh, I was a real teenager when I discovered uh, Le Grand Bleu, so I think I liked it as a you know you you 14 years old and you go to the cinema and then you're happy to watch a movie, but uh, that was it. It was not uh, very. Um, Intense for me. Uh, I've, uh, well, I, I, I'm just saying that uh, I'm not doing cinema today thanks to Luc Besson. French cinema can be very diver di di diverse. To be honest, I think that there's no family of uh, French directors. The, it, 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 the, there was a Nouvelle Vague and there are no more Nouvelle Vague. They're just uh, very selfish directors who are working uh, alone and uh, we're not trying to make a family anymore. But it's maybe something uh, which has to do with the world right now. I mean, it's, uh, it's a very, uh, yeah, it's a very selfish world.